So we're continuing our unit that we started when we started talking about all this stuff. Do you remember the first story we read? No. It was just a few minutes. Last week, the first one in this uh, unit about immigration and he's talking about things. Nicholas Gage. The teacher that changed my life. Well, this is another story along the same theme, but it's a poem this time. And we're going to TP cast this poem. So, remember, we look at the title, How I Learned English. You have to make a prediction about what you think the title means. So, that's our first T. So, we're going to say T1. Okay? So... A prediction. How I learn English. What do you think it's going to be about? I'm calling on the student who had their hand raised. Thank you very much. Go ahead. About someone and how they learn English because they didn't know it to begin with. Is that what you're saying? So someone's going to learn English. So first Let's read the poem, okay? And as we read this poem, we'll go back and do the other part. It was in an empty lot, ringed by elms and fur and honeysuckle. Bill Corson was pitching in his buckskin jacket. Chuck Keller, fat even as a boy, was on first, his t-shirt riding up over his gut. Ron O'Neill, Jim, Dennis, we're talking it up in the field, a blue sky above them. And there I was, just off the plane and plopped in the middle of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, in a neighborhood game, unnatural with any moves, with my notions of baseball and America growing fuzzier each time I whiffed. So it was not impossible that I, banished to the outfield and daydreaming of water or a hotel in the mountains, would suddenly find myself in the path of a ball stung by Joe Barone. I watched it closing in, clean and untouched, transfixed by its easy arc before it hit my forehead with a thud. I fell back, dazed, clutching my brow, groaning, Oh my shin! Oh my shin! And everyone peeled away from me and dropped from laughter. And there we were, all of us writhing on the ground for one reason or another. Someone said shin again. And there was a wild stamping of hands on the ground, a kicking of feet, and the fit of laughter overtook me too. And that was important, as important as Joe Barone asking me how I was through his tears, picking me up and dusting me off with hands like swatters. And though my head felt heavy, I played on till dusk, missing flies and pop-ups and grounders and calling out in desperation things like yours t and take it, but doing all right, tugging at my cap in just the right way, crouching low, my feet set, hum baby, sweetly on my lips. Okay, so now we... Read the title, How I Learned English. Let's look over here at this other part of title, why the author chose this. Okay, so we thought it was going to mean somebody's going to learn English. Okay, who said kind of? Tell me about that. Okay, so he knew... That if he didn't want to get the ball, he had to tell somebody else to do it, right? Okay, so it wasn't that he was joking. Where did he get hit? In the forehead, but he didn't know that's what it was called in English, so he said it was his shin. That's why everybody laughed, right? Okay, so he mixed up his words. So he did kind of learn English. By hanging out with who? Some baseball buddies, okay? So, the author, why do you think the author chose that title? If we didn't know he was trying to learn English, what would we not have understood? 
The shin part. Talk a little bit more about that, you. Right. Okay. So to let us know why saying shin was so funny. Okay, so we're talking about figurative language and emotions here. So let's look at some similes and metaphors if we can find them, okay? Tell me one, Matthew. Okay, good. So on the back part right here, it says, dusting me off with hands like swatters. What um, word let you know, Matthew, that that was a simile? Okay, so that's the two things being compared, but what word gave it away for you? Like. That lets us know it's a simile. Good. All right. Now, what about some sensory language? What else in this, right here at the beginning, can you hear? Remember, sensory language, it tells us about things we need to know. Tell me, sweetheart. Good. There's a wild stamping of hands on the ground. We can hear this, so it's sensory language. Whatever the author does to give us some part of letting them know that um, we can see it in our mind, right? Does that make sense? All right. 